Jake Steinberg is a former content creator for Game Explain, one of the few people on a team working together for a larger YouTube channel that has nearly one and a half million subscribers. So with that being laid out, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. What the hell is going on with Game Explain behind the scenes? It doesn't seem to paint a pretty picture with what Jake Steinberg just revealed with his Twitter account. And it's something I wanted to dive into, not just because it's an interesting topic, but also because it kind of personally affects me and the perspective that somebody would take on how they handle their YouTube channel, creating content, and if they should join a larger conglomerate company to get a name for themselves instead of building their reputation by themselves online. There's a lot to dive into with this, but going into what's transpired behind the scenes, I just had to bring this up because it is a concerning trend. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for my full article breaking down this interesting story. Jake Steinberg has announced that he is leaving Game Explained because, well, he's not a big fan of the management, the hours, the pressure, the lack of respect and attention he was getting there, and he felt like it wasn't worth the effort he was putting into it. Get comfortable because this is quite a long letter, but I want to read through it all just to give the full context of why Jake quit. Why I left Game Explain. I found the work incredibly unfulfilling and, as time went on, my technical abilities and efficiency were used against me to constantly squeeze out more videos. Even while giving 100% and even while producing far more content than my peers, I found myself repeatedly interrogated about how I could do more. How could I become more efficient? How could I sacrifice time to think or be creative in order to produce more disposable content? I was overworked and underappreciated. While my boss was streaming games or bragging on Twitter about the channel performing better than ever, I was churning out the content that got in there. I would work past midnight to cover a late Mario Kart DLC launch then start my next day at 8 a.m. Nobody cared what I was missing out on. I would work weekends to cover big releases after Nintendo revoked the channel's PR access. I was made to feel like a crazy person for thinking that grinding on content for a whole Saturday was made okay by getting off a single slow news day. I would beg for KPIs that would let me know there was at least some metric, some way I could say I did a day's worth of work and be done. I think I'm good at representing myself in confrontational settings, but at best I'd kindly be told things would change, never did. And at worst, be talked down to like a child for expressing dissatisfaction. But hey, nobody can stop me now. I was fortunate enough to land some writing opportunities when I needed them most and that will cushion me for a minute before the search begins for my next full-time thing. Thanks for reading all this. Free Palestine, Jake. And that is a mouthful. Everything he went through here, expressing his dissatisfaction with how he was treated as an employee, how he felt like he was talked down to, overworked. Uh, he doesn't say underpaid, but it's definitely implied here that he was working way more than what he was being paid for. He didn't feel like he was getting his value worth of the effort that he was putting into Game Explain. And upon first glance, many people would read this and take his side, as I do as well. But we all know there are two sides to every story, and I want to present the other side to this. From the editor-in-chief, the founder of Game Explain, Andre, and oh my god, is this a lot of text. I'm going to do my best to get through it, but in the interest of preserving exactly what transpired between the two of these people, I feel like it's very important to read through both of their statements so that we have a more clear picture of what actually transpired behind the scenes there. Titled, My Response, and published to Google Docs, Andre says, Hey everyone, what I'm able to say will be slightly limited for employee confidentiality reasons, but I'll do my best to address as much of Jake's concerns as I can. First, to Jake. I feel horrible that you felt overworked and underappreciated. From your very first application, you always went above and beyond my expectations for work, even when I tried to rein in your effort at times. 
and I want you to know that I tried my best to ensure you didn't end up feeling how you did. I checked in with you personally on multiple occasions. Specifically, I noticed you might have been feeling stressed or burned out to see if there was anything about work that we could address to improve how you felt. But whenever I tried to discuss things with you, you almost always assured me you were fine, either writing it off as a temporary feeling that you overcame or that there were other reasons beyond work making you feel that way. It's hard for me to fix something when I'm not being told the full truth of the matter. Before I go any further in this, I read that. And while, yes, I do see Andre's perspective on this and that it had nothing at all to do with Game Explain. The problem I have reading this, though, is it comes across as almost a defensive approach like, whoa, 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 it's not me, it's you. And let me remind you, it's you. And... We've all had managers that have taken that kind of approach and it's just the most unsettling feeling that you can have to have a manager that's just blaming you no matter what. And no matter what happens, it's always your fault and they have these things to fall back on. When I would challenge Andre to say, if you noticed that there were issues and you tried reaching out, maybe it's on you, Andre, for not reaching out the right way. Or maybe Jake didn't feel comfortable enough sharing with you because he didn't trust you or whatever reason it may have been. If you saw that as an issue and in not having that reciprocation from your employee, maybe that's a you thing. Just trying to see things from both perspectives here. But he continues. One of the few issues Jake did clearly communicate to me was how he felt his workload was imbalanced, specifically as it related to one of his coworkers. Jake felt he was putting in more effort based on the amount of videos output per person, with the other coworkers' performance being deemed lesser. Now, I've never worked at a workplace where someone didn't feel like they did more work than another, or felt another coworker wasn't entirely pulling their weight. And as such, this is an incredibly hard issue to address, especially for a small team, as there are countless factors at play. In this case, the different job roles we're discussing were different. Jake was hired primarily as a news editor, with a focus on more frequent but shorter and less complicated videos, whereas other staff members were more focused on longer form features to varying degrees, which naturally take longer to produce. Again. It just feels like Andre is trying to offload the pressure from himself and make it seem like this is Jake's fault for being frustrated with Game Explain. And maybe Andre's right, but just the angle and the approach he's taking here sounds like a manager that doesn't want to be accountable. In response to this concern, I immediately performed an audit over a two month period to assess the workload and output balance. And while Jake did end up producing more videos as expected, it wasn't by such a large margin that it seemed out of balance with the longer features the other staff member produced. For all of its benefits, it sometimes sucks having to work remotely. Not only is it difficult not being able to see and interact with coworkers face to face without scheduling a meeting or making it feel like an intrusion, but we also don't have the natural transparency into what each other is doing on a day-to-day -day basis that we would have in an office setting. And Jake, not having the same bird's eye view that I did, clearly wasn't aware of the true amount of time and effort the team member in question was putting in, as effort isn't a metric that can be measured only by tabulating the number of videos produced in the end. Again, I can't help but read this and feel like Andre is trying to put the blame on Jake here. When I read Jake's statement, I'm like, man, that's a frustrated employee that feels like he wasn't getting the notoriety he deserved, the attention, the respect from his peers that he put the work into and didn't get. And instead of having a manager that just says, I feel terrible about this situation. We're going to make sure this never happens again at this company. And that is awful. We have this. Andre is offloading this all onto Jake and making it feel like it's Jake's fault that Jake couldn't deal with the unfair balance at work. Not to mention having someone that's saying that going to an office is better than remote work really grinds my gears, but I'm not even going to get into that one here. A few weeks ago, during the last discussion I had with Jake about this issue, I tried to explain that what matters most at the end of the day is his own work 
instead of constantly comparing himself to a perceived level of a colleague's output and to focus on what we can do to assure he isn't feeling overworked or burned out. Unfortunately, this was perhaps what he perceived to be me addressing him like a child, which was not at all my intent. Holy crap, are you delusional? If you have an employee that is expressing concerns and frustrations to you and they feel like they're being treated like a child because they're bringing this information to you and you can't even admit, maybe I handled that inappropriately. Maybe there was a better way for me to approach the topic because clearly it was a sensitive subject. Maybe I didn't handle it the right way. Any of those things would have been better than saying, oh, you thought I was treating you like a child because, well, sounds like you deserve to be treated like a child. I just, I can't with someone who talks like this. And this is weird for an editor because I don't know who the intended audience for this letter is. It's publicly facing but then he'll say it like he's talking directly to Jake, but then other times he'll say he's talking to everyone else. So try to stay with me on this from the editor-in-chief of Game Explain. I took steps to try and head off potential troublesome areas, such as when we were working together on the plans for our semi-regular news show. Jake initially wanted it to be every day before I suggested we keep it to three days a week to start in order to give him time to breathe, assess, and prepare between each episode. Notice how Andre is just so perfect and making no errors here and trying to direct Jake the best he can, but Jake is just this employee that just doesn't understand how our business operates. It's just It sounds like he's talking down to him right now in this letter facing everyone else. I tried to work with him on the general workflow after each episode to ensure it was manageable and eventually resulted in several segments getting cut, which was apparently perceived as me scrutinizing his work or interrogating him when I was just trying to understand his workflow so I could offer suggestions on how we could improve it. I tried to work with Jake to increase efficiency, not to increase output, but to ensure he wasn't putting in more time and effort than needed, and that projects such as the news show could be comfortably executed within a typical shift on the schedule we settled on. This is a book. This reply is so insanely unnecessary, overwhelmingly long, that it feels like Andre is trying to hide his errors by, ironically, over explaining everything from Game Explain on why Jake was the issue, where Jake was like, I'm out guys, I am done with this. I am so sick of being treated like a, like a child, overworked, underappreciated. I don't wanna deal with this anymore. And to me, I can respect that approach from an employee. If they're working their ass off and they feel like their manager is a dick, I get it. Like you wanna tell people, don't work for that guy. It's not a good environment for you. I set out with the intention of reading all of this to you guys when I made this video, but even reading it personally and then going into recording it, this is just too much. I'll put it in smashjt.com. You can read through the rest of it there, but I'm not even halfway through this ridiculously over explaining, super long letter trying to defend himself, Andre Seeger over at Game Explain, trying to tell everyone why he's not the problem, even though by over explaining, it's kind of, I don't know, making him look like he's the issue. I reached out to my buddy Joey Ferris, Ferris Wheel Pro, who also works over at Game Explain, just to get a comment from him. And he's a good friend of the channel. I've interacted with him. I've known him for a long time. It's a good dude. And while we don't see eye to eye on everything, especially in the political spectrum, we do appreciate gaming and that is our common bond. So I reached out to Joey to talk to him about what his thoughts were on this. And he said he's doing well, but he has no comment. And I told him I can respect that because I don't want to put him into a precarious position between him and Andres and whatever the hell's going on over at Game Explain right now because it's a mess. It's clearly a mess and they have no one to blame but themselves. Clearly it's a problem if one person is saying, I can't do this anymore. But based off of going through the Twitter history, there's a lot of people saying that this is not the first time 
that something like this has happened. And Liam Robertson, who is a very well-respected figure in the game industry, replied to the Game Explained situation on Twitter stating, The Game Explained situation makes my blood boil a bit, honestly. I have been through all that with sites before, and for Andre to have not fixed any of the same issues raised years ago shows that he really doesn't care. This is all just a business to him at the end of the day. And honestly, I couldn't agree more. When I went into this and I started reading, first off, Jake's explanation, I was just like, oh man, that just sounds like a really pissed off, disgruntled employee. Huh. Wonder what happened there. You know, maybe he's got some issues. I don't know, Jake. I've never interacted with him. Maybe there's something going on with him psychologically that's just kind of weird and okay. And then I started diving deeper into the history of Game Explain and Andre and the issues that they've had in the past there. And I'm like, okay, that gives some more ammunition for Jake to have a case here to make it feel like he's not the problem with what's going on at Game Explain. And Ultimately, after reading through half of this explanation from Andre, I've already given it way too much attention that he even deserves. Because honestly, yes, I'm sure Jake had some things wrong with how he approached the business aspect of his job. Sure he did. No one's perfect. But to see it, Andre, like to have these issues continuously occurring... And, and trying to offload the blame on someone else, not being accountable, not handling it like a true professional, not writing a tweet just straight up saying, I'm really sorry that this happened under my watch. It's never going to happen again. And just be done with it. To try to over explain it the way he did just makes you look even worse. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that's why I get so frustrated with this entire situation. Again, if you want to read full context, like I said, I went into this video expecting to do it and I just got too tired. There's just too much to go through. And I mean, you don't even need to. The point is made in the first paragraph when Andre replies with what he's saying. It's just kind of a slap in the face to Jake. And I'm fully on Jake's side. Yes, I understand both share the blame, but ultimately as the leader, as the editor-in-chief at Game Explain, and as Jake's manager, you have the responsibility to make sure that everything is okay. And trying to blame Jake for the frustrations that he shared with you is just so gross. I, I don't know. I, I hope that people that work at Game Explain don't have the same experience that Jake did. And I hope my friend there, Joey, is still enjoying his time there. But based off of what just transpired here, this feels like it's doomed for a company. It's going to implode on itself if they don't get a grip of the steering wheel and put this thing going in the right direction. Holy crap. But yeah, again, check out smashjt.com for my full article breaking all this information down if you want to see more of it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash it, Jay. Smash it.